think women's health in emerging markets is so challenging because what we see in women's health in general is that it's so deeply influenced by both gender roles as well as also societal attitudes to sex and reproduction. Mm -hmm. And what we see when we think specifically about emerging markets is that these, these roles, these attitudes can be very different to immature markets as well as between emerging markets and even within them. And to add to that, we've seen in patriarchy societies such as those in the Middle East, uh, women tend to present at a much later stage of diseases, uh, particularly with breast cancer. And we also see that the spouse often has more of a role with treatment decisions, mm. um, particularly the case with stigmatised illnesses um, such as depression, uh, where women often um, don't present at all or at a much later stage. That's interesting that you should mention depression because sometimes we get asked what do we mean by women's health? Is it just conditions relating to female biology or is it more broad than that? Women's health is a really broad spectrum. Um, there's the obvious um, diseases such as those linked to the reproductive uh, medicine, there's the menopause and then those are actually part of female biology such as ovarian cancer, cervical cancer. There's also um, diseases like breast cancer, which men do have, but it's much more common in women. We see mm. breast cancers 100 times more likely to occur in women versus men. Um, and then there's the less obvious diseases as well, which are linked to um, female biology, such as osteoporosis, which whilst it is something that men get, it's just more commonly linked to females and there's no obvious reason why. So there are also conditions that are nothing to do with female biology but linked to women's gender roles in society. So that could be something like eating disorders, for example, which are much more common in women than in men. Same with aesthetic medicine, which has been very much driven by um, mm -hmm. the female market. And even though those kind of attitudes are changing as ideals of beauty change in, in mature markets, that's not necessarily the case in emerging markets. I think finally as well, um, there's also the very consistent phenomenon globally that women have a longer life expectancy. And what that means is that women living longer also disproportionately experience diseases of old age, so things like Alzheimer's disease, for example. I think another very striking demographic change is really the, the massive decline that we've seen in fertility rates. So for example, if we think of the average Brazilian woman in the 1960s, she had more than six children in her lifetime. Mm. But today, the average Brazilian woman has only about two children. Um, and that has huge implications, not only on the overall population structure, but also on what women's healthcare spending and priorities look like over the course of their life. Mm. Yeah, and to add to that, we've seen huge rises in um, contraception and fertility treatment just because they are delaying having children, which is um, very similar to picture to what we see in more mature markets as well. And a key part of our job is to really help pharma companies um, develop and become more aware of the opportunities um, for women's health in emerging markets. So in your opinion, what are the, the strategies that need to be developed to help them? If we think back to the diseases of old age, for example, women in emerging markets suffer disproportionate levels mm. of financial hardship. So huge scope there to help ensure that their needs are being met in terms of potentially beyond the, beyond the pill support initiatives, or um, also, we, you mentioned about women presenting at a late stage, for example, with mm. breast cancer. So actually raising awareness initiatives, screening and prevention programmes, there's a lot of demand for those kind of strategies, those kind of initiatives from pharma companies. Market research is so critical in understanding those cultural variations, both between and within countries that you've mentioned, but also in... Uh, keeping an up-to-date understanding because roles and attitudes, the place of women is changing so fast in mm. emerging markets and, and so really understanding women's place in the society is really important to actually scope out what the opportunity is for women's health. Mm. From a more logistical perspective, I think one of the challenges for pharma companies and for us is actually considering whether women in these markets can actually take part in research, mm. especially because sometimes the, the male in the family is the key gatekeeper. Uh, and also, you know, we've seen in countries like China and rural areas that often women don't have an education. Um, so sometimes you need to think about whether they can actually review materials, um, whether that's something that they're able to do during the interview. So that's a big challenge that always needs to be thought about.